Hi, I'm Dylan Paris, and I didn't really want to make this video. You see, I spent the last week doing awesome music stuff with my iPad and Beatmaker 3, one of my favorite apps. And I actually had this idea for a video. I was going to take the song from Beatmaker, put it from scene mode into song mode, export it, and then finish it in Ableton. And I'm going to show you some of what happened when I tried to do that. So as you may notice, everything went wrong. Almost every single step of the way, something super dumb went wrong in this process. And it just is a painful reminder of the fact that as close as we are with iPad music, we are also so frigging far away and it is so frustrating. What you saw in the video literally just happened. And I just realized I can't make the video I wanted to make because Beatmaker 3 decided that when you're in scene mode, your global BPM should be whatever it is. But when you take those same clips into song mode, the BPM of your project is viewed as double for no reason. But not just that, because honestly, I could live with that. That's what I thought was going on. It seems to affect certain clips differently. Essentially, what I encountered was a fundamental disconnect and error between the scene mode and the song mode in Beatmaker 3. And this is an app that is years old. I've made very popular for my channel standards videos with Beatmaker 3, and I've never encountered this error, but we're talking about one of the most well-made and developed and grown app experiences for pro music production on the iPad, and it is still fundamentally broken, at least in that instance. And I know that things break sometimes, but I, I work in IT, I work in support, and this level of catastrophic failure on a mature product is unacceptable, okay? For, for context, I had such a good time with iPad music this week that I was like, do I even need an MC707 and a Machino Mark III? Should I just move everything to iPad? And this kind of thing just happens all the time. It's not just like this error. D1 from AudioKit, one of the most beloved audio, and shout out to AudioKit, like it's really cool that they're volunteer and like all that cool stuff, but like, Every audio kit app is so freaking finicky is audio unit v3. And if we're on the topic of audio unit v3, it's like if you have done PC music production for the last 10, 20 years, I've done about 12, not 20, you know that the VST standard is pretty rock solid. By the time I got into music production, it was primarily VST2, and I guess there's a VST3, and my apps that I use, such as Ableton, are pretty cool with either. And those, when you load them into a DAW, 
they just pretty much work. They just work, pretty much. Like, I'm not saying every VST that you'll ever find will always work perfectly, but Jesus Christ, the difference between the quality and the consistency and the reliability of a VST versus an audio unit V3 is like night and day. And you can make a really fair argument that most VSTs, high quality VSTs, on PC and Mac are way more expensive than AUV3 apps on iPad, and that is true. I would not argue against that, and maybe that's the difference. If you sell your product for 10 times the cost, then you can support and make a 10 times better product, and maybe that's it. And if that's the case, then screw me, I guess, because I just really wanted to enjoy iPad music, but it's really hard to enjoy iPad music when it keeps punching me in the face, man. It's like, these are not cheap devices, okay? My iPad Pro is a 12.9 inch 2020 iPad Pro. It only has 256 gigs of storage and that was a mistake. I should have probably got more because I also edit all of my videos in LumaFusion. I make all my thumbnails. I run this whole channel on this iPad now. And I had this amazing week where I was like, wow, these apps sound really good. And wow, you know, despite the fact that D1 from AudioKit, which I paid money for, sometimes just decides not to play the notes I entered, I'm still really enjoying this process. But to deal with all of that, make a song, using the advertised core central functionality of Beatmaker, which is a very similar workflow to Machina or Ableton, which is that you can make scenes and then put them into a song. For that to just fundamentally break, and in such a goofy way, because it's not just the BPM thing. When I dragged the audio over, it was two times as fast. So I halved the BPM, which was stupid, because if you go back into scene mode, then it plays back at half speed. But if you go into song mode, it was normal, but that wasn't it. Because the second thing, which I only realized on my second export into Ableton, was that having the BPM change fundamentally how the clips were playing, and some clips just stopped playing. And it was, it was like deeper than just BPM and speed. It was like something else fundamentally wrong. It just really friggin' gets my goat, man. Like I would, I would cuss, but I'm monetized and I, I like being monetized and <sighs> The iPad Pro is a mature product. Apple is moving their own silicon to M1, which is technically a variation of the A14, which means we are 14 generations deep. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that means we are 14 generations deep on the Apple silicon stemming from the original iPhone, right? We're talking about a product line that has existed since 2015. I know because I had the first iPad Pro and I had worse versions of these kind of problems, but you would just think, five, almost six years down the line, by five, we would be closer to done with this. For all of the amazing progress of the audio units and the Apple Music ecosystem on iPad, it feels like a bunch of really, really, really smart creative people took a product and just made it into something it wasn't supposed to be. Apple makes GarageBand and they make iMovie, but they call this thing Pro. And I've had this problem for years. I literally have other videos about this. It's like a constant ebb and flow of, wow, this thing can do things in such a cool, unique, and fast way, and oh my god, there are certain just fundamental things this thing should be doing that it can't do. And I'm not even really asking for like too much more than what seems possible. Right now, you can buy an Apple device with Apple Silicon that runs Logic Pro, but you can't do that on an iPad, even though iPad users have been on the front lines of using Apple Silicon for years. And I really, really hope that this central, core, fundamental, thing of this video is outdated in less than a year. But for the love of God, Apple needs to come in and set the ship right with music production. And what I'm talking about is that almost every single DAW on iPad has a fundamental major flaw, a deal-breaking flaw, right? GarageBand, way too simple to do real true mixing and mastering, which means you have to go somewhere else. And if you do that, you enter Cubasis land, which like Cubasis 2 had so many freaking errors, I can't even get into it. Like hitting undo would just brick my song every time. It was just like, oh, we're done, let's reset the app. Undo, a fundamental like, oh, I made a mistake. Guess I'll reload my project. Cubasis 3, mostly fine, but <sighs> I'm sure there's something there too. Beatmaker 3, easily for me the most interesting, cool and unique and Ableton-like app on the iPad Pro. My Beatmaker 3 videos do the best. More people are interested in Beatmaker 3. People have built almost like careers out of Beatmaker 3, like Bolo the producer and Henny the business, like doing, doing amazing stuff with Beatmaker 3. And yet this really old mature app gets updated like once a year. And that is so disheartening because when you find an error like today, in the back of my head, I'm like, damn, this probably will just exist for a year. And so what I'm saying is that Apple needs to bring logic to the iPad and they need to set a new standard for consistency and reliability 
on these products because I'm tired of justifying the fundamental failures of these products. I am tired of being like, everyone go get an iPad, but I cannot in good conscience tell someone to buy an iPad as a music performance device. By that I mean making songs and then playing them live. Like the amount of reliability issues I see in the production side of iPad music, you are, <laughs> the amount of possible error points in these applications, if you were to try to do this stuff live is freaking crazy. And it's why I bought an MC-707. And it's why I bought a Machino Mark III. If you're like, man, I really miss all the iPad videos. Why does Dylan make other stuff? It's because I don't trust the iPad. I cannot trust the iPad. And I can't tell you to trust the iPad. When I tell people like, oh, you should sell your MacBook Pro and get an iPad Pro, there needs to be the world's biggest asterisk there, which is that like, if you wanna use this thing with the money you paid for, for applications that say they do something, do not expect them to do everything. And I don't mean like everything under the sun. I mean, if you buy an application that says, I do this, don't trust it. You cannot trust it on iPad. And that is so unacceptable. It, we need to, like, I don't even know who to talk to because it's, it's like an ecosystem problem. Audio unit V3 cannot be trusted. In its current state, audio units are like a weird melange of like high end wild ingredients. And you're just a chef there week two of culinary class. Like, I hope this all works, but one of them poisons the other one and breaks everything. It's a terrible analogy. It's just coming from PC to iPad. The first thing you think is, oh my God, it's so light. It's so powerful. These apps sound amazing. They're so cheap. And then you put time and effort and work into it to get the most out of it you can. You build a community in iPad music and then you are like, okay, cool. I want to make a professional album. And there's a reason my album that I made is almost entirely Ableton. And it's not because I don't like how my iPad sounds. It's because I don't trust it. And because it just fundamentally breaks in really important pieces of the pipeline and it's unacceptable. These are not cheap devices. And also, now that the Apple MacBooks are really powerful and also really cheap, it is really tempting to just be like, you know what? I'm sick of all the downsides of the iPad. I wanna just go get a 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 and have Logic and have Ableton and have Final Cut and be done with this. And I'm, I probably won't because the iPad is so freaking cool and it's so light and thin and it's versatile and it can be so many things and I keep coming back to it every time I leave. But it's like a really bad relationship where it does not treat us right and Apple is not treating us right. Apple, you have to stop calling this thing a pro if you're not gonna support it with pro applications. Point blank, period, seriously. It's been five years, okay? It's been five years. If you're gonna call this thing a pro device, you need to put your pro apps. It would be one thing if y'all didn't have pro apps, but you make one of the best, in my opinion, the best video editing software on the world, Final Cut Pro. I love it, I miss it every time I don't have it, which I don't, because I switched to iPad Pro, like a pro. <laughs> Bring Final Cut to the iPad and make it stable and make it good. You already are running this application on the same processor. Bring Logic Pro to the iPad, make it stable, Make it good. You're already running it on the same processor. And I really hope this video is outdated in like a week. Yes, it would suck for my SEO. Yes, it would suck for ad revenue, but it would be good for my freaking life because I'm so tired of fundamentally broken and rusty, rambling, bad old used cards of apps that are trying their best, but for whatever fundamental reason, this operating system and this plugin standard just, I don't know, I don't know. Apple needs to get in there and be like, this is what a pro music app looks like. This is how it runs. Now that it has an Ableton-like scene mode, I would be happy to just become a Logic Pro iPad user if they bring an actual pro version of this app to the iPad. Same with Final Cut. It's way past time. It's way past time. You cannot sell this for over $1,000. You cannot call it a pro product and be like, and here's iMovie and here's GarageBand. I love y'all, dude, but just come on. And to everyone else, to all of the other app developers. Some of y'all are really small teams. I've been making videos about LK recently, which is an Ableton-like plugin that you can use standalone or you can use as an audio unit in apps like AUM. It's really cool. It's really limited. It's pretty buggy. It's a team of two people. So you know what? All the love and shouts in the world to the Imaginando folks, because if, if two-ish people, maybe a little more, are able to make something that cool, cool. This is not me knocking you. Okay, so the rant I'm about to go on, you're excluded. And truly, a lot of these apps are made by one person or two people. And that is, it's really hard to support an application like that across a large suite of possible hardware configurations. Albeit all on a very similar base structure chip, but still. That said, someone needs to do better. I don't know if it's on the OS level, 
I don't know if it's on the standards level. I don't know what's so weird about audio unit compared to VST that I cannot trust individual audio units to play nice. And if you're like, well, that's not an unfair expectation, then you have not been paying attention to music production on computers until now. And that's awesome if true. Welcome to the party, it's really fun. But no, it's not always like this. It doesn't have to be like this. You shouldn't have to pay $20 for an app, load it into another $50 app, and then be like, oh, I guess I, guess I can't use them together. That was $70, just, okay. You shouldn't get super invested into an app and then find that like a really, really, really basic fundamental promise part of it. I'm not being an outlier here. Scene and song are right next to each other, right next to pattern. These are three fundamental parts of Beatmaker 3, a third generation mature app that has existed for years. And the fact that taking something from scene into song was that bored on the year of our Luigi 2020. No, no, unacceptable. Point blank unacceptable, do better. All of you, like everyone involved in this chain do better because people are paying real money for this and putting real time into this. And it's getting way harder for me to be like, yeah, come to iPad land. When it's like every week I find one to five to 10 really fundamentally wrong and broken things with this whole workflow. And that's not how it was on my MacBook. It's just not, it's not how it was in Ableton. And you might be like, well, why did you switch? Anyone who's watching this who is an iPad music producer knows why I switched. Because despite all of the chaos and the brokenness, there is something so cool about the iPad. It's so thin, it's so, here, I, I have it, here. This thing, this tiny thing, thin, and this is the big one. This dude is so powerful and so portable. And if you slap it onto a magic keyboard, it becomes a laptop and if you plug in a big old MIDI controller, it becomes like a full scale workstation keyboard thing. If you want to edit non-linear video in 4K, multiple streams with your hands, you can. If you want a mouse and keyboard, you can connect them. It is so clearly the future, but it's been five years, okay? And it's been two years of this form factor, and it's been years and years of audio unit, and you already killed inter-app audio. It needs to be better, because it would be one thing if Apple was sending all of these to all of us for free and being like, hey, will you beta test our new hardware? We're thinking in around 2025, it'll be ready. That would be fine because it'd be free and we'd be testing it. And maybe someday I'll get this stuff for free after this video, probably not. But this is coming from a place of love. Apple is probably in my, you know, Apple is my favorite tech company. It is, it is. I go back and forth, I buy other things, but at the end of the day, the Apple ecosystem is great for a reason and everyone is copying them for a reason. And obviously there are ways in which Apple copies other people. I just mean everyone is going to making their own silicon and their own code and their own hardware because when you do that, you get a bunch of control. Evidence of which I don't see on iPad Pro for music production, but... And if you're saying, well, how do you know it's audio units? Uh, Chord Gadget 2 and Chord Gadget 1. And I rest my case. And, and let me expand on that. For a long time, I've been like, why doesn't Korg let me use audio units? Why do I only get to use Korg sounds? But then on the other hand, I've basically never ever had these problems with Korg Gadget. Like almost all the problems I've ever had with other apps, I'm not had with Korg Gadget to the point that like this, that last song on my album was almost entirely done in Korg Gadget. Like I think I, I brought the stems into Ableton and I mixed and mastered it and I might've added a little bit of flavor, like a little bit of additional instrumentation I don't even remember because the, what came out of Core Gadget was great. Core Gadget doesn't let you use audio units and I think it's because they know that the second you introduce them, they're not trustworthy and they will break things. And that's not okay because these are not free apps. And this is not some ramshackle standard back with the first version of audio bus when people were just trying their best to get things to talk. Apple made the standard and accepted the standard and, and encouraged the standard to the point that they killed inter-app audio. Anyway, if you're like, go cry about it, I might. I'm gonna feel this out, I'm angry. But it's not right that these apps cost so much money. And if you're like, well, why don't you just use Korg Gadget? It's like, well, why would you ever use any other pieces? Why would you use an audio unit? Because they sound good. The Sugar Bites apps sound amazing. I got drum computer this week. This, in an alternate reality in which Beatmaker let me export my music, this could have been a video about how awesome Drum, mach drum Machine or whatever it's called, Drum Computer by Sugar Bites is, but no, no. Because the fundamental, just base structure of a music operating, of a digital audio workstation is so borked on iPad, I can't be like, look at all these cool sounds, look how cheap they are. And maybe I'm asking too much because they are cheap, but I don't think basic, advertised functionality is too much to ask for. And everybody in this space needs to do better. The 2020 iPads have been out 
for a while. The 2020 Pro came out in the spring, maybe even the winter. I don't know what the hell is going on with some of these apps. The way I see it, the only way to really fix it is for Apple to come in and show people how it's done, which means that Apple needs to bring Logic Pro to the iPad as soon as possible, and it needs to be brick solid reliable. And maybe that is asking too much, but like, stop calling it a Pro then. Just call it the big old iPad, the iPad fast screen. Or bring your Pro apps and then it gets to be the iPad Pro. Anyway, that's my rant. I'll be back sometime in the future with a happier video, but I'm not happy right now. So, uh, like and subscribe. <laughs>